Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today is a very, very, very warm day and I've had to close the blind loads because the sun is like full pelt in here now because it's the afternoon and I've had to close my window because the birds outside are really, really noisy. So I'm gonna make this as quick as possible because I'm already overheating quite dramatically. <laughs> um, and I also hope the lighting's okay and it's not too weird. Anyway. Today I have another tutorial for you. Um, this one has been quite highly requested, so I thought, why not? I will do it. Um, so we're going to make some bunting today. Um, I have a um, technique for my bunting where there are no raw edges on show. Um, it just makes for a really, really super neat professional finish. Um, it's great for parties, weddings, any occasion, and you can pick whatever fabrics you want. This technique can be used for any size of bunting, any shape of bunting, um, whatever you want, it, it can be applied. So I have made some little rainbow flags to go in my window downstairs. Um, and yes, basically you can use any shaped triangle flag if you want to make a triangle flag. Um, this technique works for um, scallop bunting as well, so you can do scallop shapes if you want to, but it's just a really good way of finishing your bunting. There are loads of other ways of doing it, especially leaving the raw edges on show, or you can do single fabric flags, but they just don't last as long. Whereas if you do this way, you can wash it, which is always very useful if you want it outside in the garden all summer, and you just want to give it a quick wash, it doesn't matter, you can wash it because all the raw edges are hidden, it's not going to disintegrate in your wash or fray. Um, so yeah, I just thought it would be a really fun tutorial to do and I hope you really enjoy it. Okay, so for this tutorial you will need lots of different coloured fabrics of your choosing, some ribbon or cotton tape at least a centimetre wide, otherwise it's going to be really fiddly, some pins, scissors and a pencil, a ruler is very very helpful, and I've just drawn out the stencil that I'm going to use for my bunting flags. So I'm going to do mini bunting, so I've just drawn a small bunting flag. Now you can do yours any size, it's the same technique, whatever size you're making. Um, just take into account that whatever you cut out of your stencil is going to be reduced by a centimetre all the way around. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is cut out our flag. So I'm going to use my stencil that I've drawn. And I always like to use a straight edge of the fabric already, just to make it easier. And then you can either just draw around your stencil, or what I like to do is mark three points, and then I'll use my ruler to join up the points. If you have a cutting mat and a rotary cutter, you can do this that way as well. Okay, so for this tutorial, you're going to cut out two triangles per flag. So we're going to have a front and a back. So for every triangle, you're going to need two flags cut out. I'm doing rainbow bunting, so each flag is going to be a different colour. So I'm going to cut two flags in every colour. Okay, so you're just going to continue cutting out your flags until you have as many as you like. Okay, so now I have all my coloured flags cut out and I've just given them all a quick press. So now you're just going to start constructing your bunting. So the way I do it, which I think is finished the neatest way, is if you put two flags right sides together on top of each other and you just sew with a 10mm seam allowance down the two long edges, leaving the tops open. So I'm just going to pin this together now. So now that they're pinned, like I said before, we're going to sew down one long edge with a 10mm seam allowance, leave it at the point, pivot around that point, and then you'll continue sewing with a 10mm seam allowance down the other long edge, leaving this top edge open. Okay, so once you've done that, it should look something like this. So I've done a little back stitch at the beginning. I've gone down, left my needle down, pivoted around, and just did another 10mm down this side, and another back stitch at the end. Um, so now I'm going to just clip this bottom corner here um, and that just helps it when we turn it the other way around it just help, helps it lie flat and then once you've done that you can turn it the right way and to get the points 
you can use like a, a knitting needle or a crochet hook or like I'm doing you can just really really carefully use the end of your scissors and we're just going to poke it out really gently I'm just really scared that I'm going to pierce a hole in here now I should have used a knitting needle by the way if you want to copy my little mini flags um, the size of the triangle, if I show you on a blank one, I did 9 centimetres across the top and I did 10 centimetres from the top to the point and then I just squared it off. So once you have poked out the end, this one still needs a little bit of work, but it should look something like this. So now you can give it a little press and once you've pressed it you can just chop those little triangles off the very, very top. And then just going to keep going like that until you've got all your flags sewn together. Okay, so all my bunting flags are now turned the right way around, poked the ends out, and I'm just trimming these top corners a little bit so that they're all straight, like so. Move all those little bits. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is get your ribbon or cotton tape or whatever you're using for the next part. Now, I tend to use cotton tape because I find it easier to, to use. Um, and this is going to be a little bit tricky because mine is one centimetre wide, which is fine. Um, but it just means the fiddlier it is, the longer it's going to take, basically. So what I tend to do is the fold over method. So I'm going to fold over this ribbon over the tops of each separate flag so that all the raw edges are encased. And this just makes a really, really neat finish. So the first thing I do is I've cut my cotton tape to the length that I want it. And then I'm just going to find the middle point by folding it in half. Once you've got that middle point, mark it with a pin. And this is where we start pinning our flags on. So on mine, I have seven flags in total. So this one in the middle is going to be the middle flag. So I'm going to place that over my middle section that I marked with a pin. And I'm just going to fold the cotton tape over. And then I'm just going to pin down the bunting flag, encasing those raw edges like so. So the more pins you put in the better because it just holds it nice and still. So I'm just going to put another pin in here. Like that. And then you're just going to continue adding flags this way and then adding flags this way until you've got them all pinned in place along your ribbon. Okay, so once you have it all pinned, it should look like this. Now the best thing about this method is whatever side you hang it, it looks good from both sides. Um, so wherever it's hanging, it will always look lovely. Um, so all we're going to do now is, on your machine, you want to keep both ends either side folded in half also. And you're just going to sew really, really close to those open edges so that you seal it all the way down. So just go nice and slow, nice and easy, and try and encase your flags in there really, really neatly. Okay, so once you've sewn your tape on, it should look something like this. So I've done it as close as I could to this edge. What I actually did, what to make it easier, was I had the folded edge on the side of my foot and I was just able to move my needle over with the width adjuster um, so that my needle dropped down just on this edge and that's how I just, so all I had to do was line up the fold with the edge of my foot and that really helps. But just a little tip is to go flip it over and just check it all the way down to make sure that you've got no holes. Um, it's definitely fiddly doing it with this narrow tape, but for mini bunting, I always think it looks better if it's got a narrow hem on the top. Um, but obviously if you did bigger flags, then I'd recommend you use like an inch wide cotton tape or something bigger. Um, and there you have it, some cute little mini bunting that looks good from both sides.
So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and make sure that if you do make some bunting using this technique then send me some photos because a lot of you have been doing that already with all your makes from the channel and it just makes my day and it makes me so happy so thank you. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and if you have any questions for me then please write them in the comments below and I will try and get back to you ASAP in between all my long sewing to-do lists. Um, I hope you're all well and I will see you hopefully very soon for another video. Happy handmade everyone!